What's going on, everybody? This is Al from PlaybookGamer.com, and today we're going to go through our preseason of Season 4. Hard to believe it. We're already in our fourth season with Syracuse. In our previous video, we went through the offseason. We've done a little bit of recruiting. It wasn't a very big recruiting class. We didn't have a whole lot of spots to fill, but we did bring in some quality depth, especially for the future. We've done some position changes and whatnot, and now we're ready for Season 4, but we got to do some prep work, and that's what this video is all about, the preseason. So we're going to start off with preseason options and we're going to go with schedule. Now, I've already made this. We're going to start off with an open game, open date on week one, and then we're going to start off with a bang at number six, Texas Tech. It's been a while since I played them, and I just wanted to go up against a pass-heavy team just because we're a pass-heavy team. I figured that'd be a, a fun game uh, to see. So number six, Texas Tech, out of the gate. If we can somehow survive that, we're going to have a home game against Michigan State. Now, I have seven conference games, which means I have four non-conference slots to use. I was going to put all ranked games, but I only got three of the four, which I still think is kind of realistic. But Michigan State is still going to be a quality opponent. I have no clue what they have. Uh, but I have a, I don't remember playing them in years, so I'm going to go ahead and put them on the schedule. And then we got number 16, Florida. So notice what I did here. Big 12, Big 10, SEC. I'm kind of spreading the wealth in terms of some of these schools and where they're coming from. And then after we get through that tough stretch, we're going to head into our conference schedule at West Virginia. Then you got UConn at home. You need to come down here. We got at Rutgers, Pitt at Cincinnati, at South Florida. Open dates between that one game. And then we got Louisville. That's our last conference game. But we're going to end the season with a game against Virginia Tech. Number 13, Virginia Tech. So that's three of the four non-conference games are ranked games. And they all look pretty quality player or teams. Should be a lot of fun. And then notice this is an ACC team. So all four of those non-conference games are from teams from different conferences. So that's going to be a pretty good schedule. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And maybe we can create some good home and homes with them maybe next season, depending on how good these games go. Like we got a really tight game with Florida. Maybe we could do a home and home with them next season. But that is the schedule. I'm really excited about it. That's more than strong enough for us to hopefully go through it and possibly get to a national title game. And besides, we're 15th in the country out of the gate. So even if we lose a game, we still may have a chance. Let's go to redshirt players. We don't have a whole lot to red shirt, but I'm going to walk you through every position. So when it comes to quarterback, our starter is going to be J.D. Hill just because he's an impact guy. And we got true freshman Kenny Pope. We are going to redshirt him. That's obvious. we got plenty of bodies ahead of him. We won't need him this season. We only have one option to redshirt at halfback, and that is Jason Heath. We will not redshirt him because he is our number one halfback. Fullback, nobody to redshirt. Wide receiver, we got three options technically, and they're all upper level guys And Spencer, Harley, and Bennett, but they've been a staple of our passing attack for several years, so we're not going to redshirt any of those. Tied in, we are going to redshirt the freshman, Robert Cooper. As you could tell, we got plenty of good bodies ahead of him. We won't need to redshirt him, and it's obvious we're not going to redshirt our best skill player in Brandon Sanders. Then you go to tackle, nobody to redshirt there. You go to guard, we are going to redshirt the freshman, Ryan McDonald. And left guard, he is by far our best guard on the team, and it's obvious we're not going to redshirt him. There's nobody to the redshirt at center. You go to defensive end. I only need four active players at all times, and it just kind of worked out where I don't need the two freshmen this season. Jake Green and then Leroy McGrew. I, I just love that name. I think he's going to be a stud for us down the line. But we got four other guys right here that are more than capable. I think that's plenty of depth. If somebody gets hurt, uh, we can always have the backup work both sides. But either way, I like the setup here. Defensive tackle, we are going to redshirt one player, Charles Harris, the freshman, but we all know about the other freshman, Big V, Vince Robertson, number eight. He is definitely going to be playing this year. And we got options to redshirt our two other really good defensive tackles, but we're not going to do that. We need at least four active at all times. Outside linebacker, I need four active, so I'm not going to redshirt any of these guys. I probably could, honestly, redshirt this kid, only because we got some depth at middle linebacker that can move over and play some outside linebacker. So just kind of keep that in mind. So that's kind of what I'm going to do there. I'm glad I actually thought of this. But So we're going to redshirt uh, Wallace Jones. Middle linebacker, Hale Owens. We're going to redshirt the freshman Jordan Floyd. So notice the theme. None of these freshmen that we brought in are really going to help us out much this year. We don't need them to other than Big V. But a middle linebacker, we're going to definitely keep active Hale and Owens. Corner. I only need four active, and we're going to redshirt one of these two freshmen. I decided to redshirt William Patrick. It doesn't. I don't think neither one's going to play a whole lot. We're not going to play a whole lot of dime. As you see here at the bottom of my overlay, I have I have it listed as multiple. 
So what I'm going to do there is run a bunch of different things, just kind of fit my roster. We're not going to do a bunch of cover two all the time. Let's just put it that way. We can still sprinkle some of that in, but I just want to do some different things on defense. But having said that, I don't think we need to run a ton of dime and I only need four active corners. So I decided to redshirt Patrick only because I think he could be a starter for us possibly next year because we got some upperclassmen ahead of him. Free safety, we don't need a redshirt coach. He's our best player. Strong safety, we could redshirt Waters, but I don't think we need to. It's if We got a junior and a senior behind him and a junior, so it would probably be best if we redshirted him. He could be a junior next year with Keys being a redshirt senior. Um, I just don't know if it's... I'd rather just recruit a younger guy for next season and have him redshirt behind Waters and Keys, if that makes sense. So I don't want to redshirt Waters. I don't think he deserves being redshirted. He's been our starter for the last two seasons. We're not going to redshirt our starting kicker, and we're not going to redshirt our putter. So that is it for our red shirts. Really excited about all that. Again, we don't have to use hardly any of our freshmen. That's a good thing to see. Let's go over to rosters, and let's look at the depth chart. Gonna be pretty self-explanatory. So we got JD Hill starting quarterback. It's obvious he needs to start because of his impact status, but we got a great backup behind him. Redshirt freshman Charles Johnson. He's more of the pocket passer. But JD Hill can run a little bit, which I'm really excited about that. And then we got Trey Sledge as our third string guy. Halfback, Heath and Massey, they're gonna split the reps like they done last season. That I thought that worked well. That way neither one had to really carry the load. But then we got Quincy Price behind them. A triplet, it's going to be our number four guy. You go to fullback. We're not going to use the fullback at all, so it doesn't really matter what I do here. I thought about putting in a special formation just to have Hooper in there at least once, but I don't think I really need to. No offense to him, but fullback just is an important position in our offense. Wide receiver is the same three. Spencer on the left, Holloway on the right, and I like Harley in the slot due to his speed. Then we got Bennett as the number four guy. It's been that way all last season, and it worked really well, I felt like. Then we got Gates and Singleton to back up everybody else. You go to tight end, Sanders and Smith is going to be our starters. I've decided to bring back... He was, if you remember, we redshirted him last year, and I'm just excited to see what this 6'10 behemoth can do again. But we're going to have Jennings play some as well. We're actually going to play all three of these tight ends. I know we got a force uh, tight end in Dixon, but Dixon is a, is a, he can't catch all that well. He got a 70 on the catch, so he's our number four guy. So I don't know if we'll ever get to see him play. However, I am going to play all three of these guys in some form or fashion. Okay, probably via formation subs and such. But again, Smith's height has to be used in some form. It's just got to. All right, offensive line, pretty simple. Left tackle, I'm going to have Nelson over Peterson, mainly because he has the better blocking skills. You can just tell he's just a better blocker all around. And we're going to run the ball a little bit more than what we've been doing in the past. So that's another benefit as well. So he's our starting left tackle, sophomore. Left guard, our best offensive lineman, and Andrew Dean, true sophomore. This was just an incredible pickup for us. Really excited about him. Then he got guard, or a center. Miller's going to be our starter over Martin, mainly because of his awareness is so much better, and awareness really does a good job in avoiding high snaps. Right guard, I want to have Meyer over Robinson. Yes, Robinson is a 78 compared to Meyer's 76, but I have to go by... Their skills, pass blocking is better. His run blocking is better. So I'm just going to put Meyer as our starter. He is a senior. And then right tackle, we got Jarrell Sanders, 88 overall. Technically, I guess he's our best offensive lineman. It's very obvious why we are starting him. Okay. Now let's look at our defense. So our Leo is what I'm going to start calling. That's what Tennessee likes to call it. Our left end, this is usually our speedster defensive end who can get sacks. Peterson has been our go-to sack leader for the last two seasons, and he's just a junior. So he's starting. Then we got Henderson behind him. Then you got right in Carlson. He started last year, and we're going to have Holland behind him. I tend to like to have the bigger defensive ends on the right side. Defensive tackle. Butler is our number one guy, but Vince Robinson, Big V, is going to start. I have him over Wagner. He's just stronger, and that's pretty much what I need. I just need guys who can push guys around, more or less. His tackle is rating is the same as Wagner's as well, and he's just humongous. It's just very simple why we're going to start him. He's going to be a starter for the next four years. I'm really excited about that. You go to outside linebacker, we got Lawrence. Very obvious why he's starting there at left, and we got Jackson behind him. Then we got middle linebacker. We're going to have Chris Hill, then Gibson, 
then Owens, because at right outside linebacker, we got Owens. Notice how much better he is at right outside linebacker compared to middle linebacker. So it's going to be really exciting to see what this kid can do. Plus, he has 88 speed. Incredible. Would love to have that speed on the outside, and you're going to see plenty of it this year while we run a lot of 4-3. We're actually going to run some 4-4 as well. Then we got Jackson pretty much going to be the backup for both uh, sides right there. Or actually, I could probably put Young while I'm here. Let me go ahead and do that. Yeah, let's put Young there. Then we have Jackson be on the other side. Let's go to corner. It's the same three. Sanchez on the left, Ford on the right, and Newton is our nickel. It worked really well last season. See no reason to change it. And then we got Spinner as our number four. He's a true freshman. Again, he won't see the field hall that much unless one of these guys gets hurt and hope that doesn't happen. Free safety, very simple coach. Then you got Bradley and Smith behind him. Strong safety, Waters is still going to be our starter. And then you got Keys and Parker behind him. Just incredible depth across both of these positions. But you notice we got a lot of upperclassmen, a lot of juniors and seniors. Keep that in mind when we look at recruiting here in a little bit. Kicker. 82 overall, very simple, but he's starting. Then you got punter. We got the lone punter and Parker. He's going to be his starting spot there for another three more years. Kick return. This did not change from last season. I thought Harley done a really good job on kick return and punt return. So our big three is going to be Harley, Ford, and Massey. And you go to punt return, Harley, Ford, and Massey. When it comes to kickoff starter, McKinney's going to be the better of the two there. You get a long snapper. I tend to put the backup center as my number one long snapper and my third string behind him just to give them a little bit more reps. So that is the depth chart. You go to view and edit rosters, and we can check out our team captains. It's always by seniority and awareness. So our highest awareness, who's a senior on offense, is... Jarrell Sanders. So big number 77 is an offensive captain. And our defensive captain is Jeremy Sanchez. Really cool to see that. So there are your team captains. You go to program standards. Now this is a bit of an issue. Not We'll see if it will be or not. We need to get a couple backups in trouble so I can really uh, punish them hard. We need to get that bar down. But I got 56 points to spend if anybody gets in trouble this year. All right, let's go over to Athlon Sports. Actually, I want to talk about the playbook first before we head into that. So the playbook, nothing's really going to change, but I do have a couple of different things I'm doing here. So notice we have Shotgun Ace. Last year we had Gun Split. I just didn't use it enough except kind of around the goal line. But our biggest and best unit on offense is our tight end position. And we got four guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my number one and number two tight end start at the ace formation. I'm going to have my backups probably do ace twins or do a combination of the two where all four of my tight ends are going to be in here somewhere. But the rest of this is going to be all Sanders, which is an obvious reason why we're doing that. He's just our best tight end. But we're going to see all four of those tight ends. I'm going to use these a lot more often. So I'm really excited about that. But the rest of these are pretty familiar. I added trio offset and that's the only other difference. The reason why I added it along with those other ones is because I'm switching up my passing game to me make it more shoot-like. So if you go to audibles, for example, I'm going to include pretty much two main passing concepts. Like if you go over to, let's go wide trips. So if you think run and shoot, I just done a run and shoot playbook for college football 25. One of the main concepts is a switch concept. So PA wide receiver in, yes, it's play action, but it's still the switch concept. We're going to add more of this, so I can add, again, more shoot to my screen and shoot offense. And we're also going to do a lot more outside hitches with wide receivers. So you're going to see a lot more of this. You're going to see a lot more wide receiver screens of that nature. Of course, we've been running a lot of wide receiver screens anyways, but you go over here to like trips over. We're going to run a little bit more of this. Again, I like to see those outside hitches only because I'm trying to replicate a little bit more of the veer and shoot, what Tennessee likes to run and a few other teams that run that offense. We're going to do a lot more of that. So we're going to use more angle. Again, I like to see that backside hitch. It's just very similar to what the veer and shoot guys like to do, just a ton of outside hitches and goes and such. So we're going to do a lot of that. On top of that, I'm going to probably throw in basic speed option, not a whole lot, but just enough to kind of get things going a little bit just because I got a quarterback that can run a little bit. Other than that, more screens and more deep balls and such. So that's going to be pretty much the offense, and I just can't wait to unleash a lot of that. So we got that out of the way. Let's go over to Athlon Sports. Let's go to preseason polls. 
we are, I think, what, 15th in the country? Is that right? Yeah, so we're 15th. There is Florida. We're going to take them on. We're going to take on Virginia Tech. We're going to take on Texas Tech. Again, that's just a really tough schedule. But there we are. Where's Michigan State? Let's go look them up. I'm just curious. I never look these teams up. I just picked teams. Oh, they're 36 in the country. So they're solid. They're B a plus overall. So I'm really excited about taking them on as well. Because, again, I don't remember playing them. It's been years, probably since my Indiana days. Let's go to Heisman Watch. Quarterback for Cal, Nick Smith, wide receiver from Iowa. That is a, a conundrum. Let's just put it that way. No offense to Iowa offenses and fans, but I know their offense isn't the greatest in the world in real life. But you got a couple more quarterbacks, one out of Toledo. Quarterback out of Texas Tech, Kenneth Walker. We're going to go up against him in our first, next game. And then look who is in fifth place, Jason Heath. We're still going to do some halfback swings, but we're going to feature him just as much as we can as anything else, that's for sure. Let's go to preseason All-Americans. We may have a couple on here. So here's your first teamers. I'm just going to quickly go through it to see if we got anybody on there. First team, we do not. What about second team? Look at Toledo. Nice. Good for them. You look at here. Yes, we have cornerback Nick Newton. That's interesting why they have him there. Maybe because of the sacks and the zone blitzes we used with him. I'm not really sure. Either way, it's cool to see him on there. I'm kind of surprised by that. Let's go to the Big East and see. Heath is a first-teamer. Harley's a first-teamer. We got big Brandon Sanders. I'm going to really try to use him even more this season if I can. If we got any defensive players, there's Newton again. And what about the second team? We may have a couple on here. Yes, we got more than a couple. We got both of our starting guards, Andrew Dean, Jonathan Meyer, and defensive end John Peterson. And we got cornerback Jeremy Sanchez. Really nice. So we got several all-conference players, as we should. We've won the last three conference championships. Let's go to conference outlook. Speaking of, they have us number one with Pitt, UConn, and Louisville. Louisville's gone down a little bit, and UConn had a really good season last year. So it's cool to see them move up. But they got Pitt at number two. And I already don't remember if, they, if that's a home game or an away game for us. I think it's a home game this season. But either way, they got us picked to win the conference again. Toughest places to play. It would be cool if we can get our dome up in this list, but looks like that's not going to happen. I mean, it's possible, I guess, but it would be cool if the Carrier Dome was on here. All right, I think all that's left is recruiting. So our recruiting strategy isn't going to change much or anything in terms of, like, stipulations or whatnot. My schemes are still going to be pretty much the same. I know what I got to look for. But what we do need to see here is some numbers. So here is our total team. We got 55 players coming back if nobody left early or transferred out. That means we got 15 spots to fill. So this upcoming recruiting class is going to be a little bit bigger than what we had last season. It looks like we need some wide receivers. It looks like we need some outside linebackers. We also need to think about the future, which positions have more upperclassmen. So like I'm kind of looking here, for example, halfback. We got one sophomore, but two juniors. So those are going to be seniors next year. So it helps to plan ahead, have a really good halfback to redshirt next season would be excellent to have. Of course, wide receiver, I'd like to pick up a couple there. Outside linebacker, looks like we just need bodies. However, according to my notes, I don't mind moving over a middle linebacker if needed. And besides, one of our starting outside linebackers, this season is technically a middle linebacker. You also look at, for example, our safety positions, free and strong, bunch of upperclassmen. So I put that in my notes, wide receiver, outside linebacker, halfback, free safety, and strong safety. So another thing we got to keep in mind, if you go back to our schedule, we'll go to play week, actually. Let's go to play week. One of our biggest problems, I don't know if I consider it a problem, is you know when it comes to regular season recruiting, you like to have home visits towards the end of the season. That's pretty natural. However, our home visits will be kind of weird. So we have a home game against Pitt on week eight. But look what happens with the rest of our schedule. On the road, bye, on the road, bye. And then we finally got another home game. This is a big gap right here, a full month gap. It just kind of depends. We probably need to just only go after two or three players in the regular season. The less you have to go after, the faster they will probably commit to you because the more points you put into them. If I go after five players, it may be like right through here before one of these guys are ready to visit. So I don't know. It would be nice if the two or three guys we go after would all be ready to visit by at least a pit game. But if not, we got to wait a full month to bring somebody in for a visit. So having said that, I think I'm just going to go after... 
three or four at the absolute most, kind of like we done last season. But I still want to get the 12 guys on scholarship. So let's go find the 12 we're looking for. The first thing I like to do is go through our pipelines, just make sure we know what those are. Starting off, Connecticut is a pipeline, which I find pretty funny. Now, uh, they got a four-star fullback we will never use, and they got a four-star middle linebacker. We got plenty of options there already, so I'm not going to bother with Connecticut in the regular season. Keep on going. We should have Maryland is a pipeline. I still want to keep that notice. They tend to have a little bit more talent than some of the other smaller states. So we'll definitely go here in Maryland. Our biggest pipeline is Pennsylvania, which should pop up. Technically, New Jersey is another one. I completely forgot about that. So we're going to hit New Jersey real hard as usual. And then we got New York, our home state. We'll definitely look at this one pretty hard. Looks like I already see a five-star guard and a five-star halfback. We probably have to go after him. Again, you keep, got to keep your in-state guys home. Then you go over to Pennsylvania. There we go, Pennsylvania. This is our other big pipeline. We're going to hit this one as hard as we can as well. So let's start off with New York. I like to start off with our pipeline, our home state. And let's just go through here real quick. Actually, let's just do it. Yeah, let's just go from this angle. So I'm going to go to halfback. Here's a five-star halfback in-state product. I have to go after him. I don't care if he can catch the ball or not. I mean, he looks like another Heath to me, six feet, 200 pounds. Let's just definitely go after him. I'm going to look here. Five-star guard. I need somebody who's really smart and is really big because we pass a lot for pass protection and whatnot. This seems very obvious that we need to go after this guy. His squat's 690. And he's really smart. So we'll definitely go after him. Let's look at some other ones. Uh, outside linebacker, we can look at a couple of these. I'd like to have some smart dudes here, honestly. Uh, let's just go after this guy, Rashawn Newby. We don't need a middle linebacker. We don't need any corners. But free safety and strong safety, I'm not seeing any there. Okay, so now let's go over to Pennsylvania. That's like my next most important pipeline. Quarterback, we got plenty of guys there. We don't need it. Here's a halfback, a four-star, and a three-star. Six feet, 190, Donnie Richardson. Um, honestly, I'd rather go in on the in-state kid, just to be honest. So let's just move on. Wide receiver's an important need for us. So here is 6'6", 178, runs a 4-3-3. I'm going to go ahead and just sit yes on that one. How about that? Let's go to tight end. We don't need anybody here technically, even though we kind of need to think in terms of uh, future, what we got to do there. Like this kid will actually probably fit the need. I'm actually going to go ahead and put a scholarship on him. <laughs> I just now realized we may need some future depth there because we got a bunch of juniors. You look at tackle. We don't need anybody. Gar, I'm good. We need to go over to biggest thing is safeties. The only thing I'm really worried about at this point. Here's an ideal strong safety. Somebody who's fast, who's tall, and who's smart. I'm going to go ahead and put one on Joe McKinney. Okay, now let's go over to New Jersey. And let's go over here and see what we got. Not worried about quarterback, halfback, fullback, receiver, no. What about tight end? Here's a four-star kid, 6'6", 250. He's a blocker. I don't know if he can catch or not. You look here, just want to make sure center, tackle. I'm not too worried about that. Biggest thing is outside linebacker and the safety. So let's go over there. Outside linebacker, here's a four-star kid, 4'5", a... Tremaine Kilpatrick. Gosh, I want him for the name alone. The more syllables, the better. Golly, give me this kid. He looks just he just looks the part. I love the name. Tremaine Kilpatrick, the fourth. All right, middle linebacker. We don't need anybody there. Corner. Here we go. Free safety and strong safety. There's nobody there. Let's go to Maryland. We got Maryland, and let's go over. There we go. Let me go to quarterback, halfback. What we need to do is just go over to wide receiver first. Here's a three-star kid, 6'5", 205. He is as dumb as can be. No offense to him. Uh, I may just bypass him. Here's another tight end. Again, it's not a big need for us, per se. Biggest thing, outside linebacker, nobody there. Middle linebacker, again, it's not the biggest need. Yes, I can move a, out, him over to outside if needed. It had to be somebody pretty fast. But I'm not too worried about that at the moment. We never have problems recruiting linebackers in the offseason anyways. Free safety and no strong safety. So we got five scholarships to give. And either I can just go and put them onto some random people or do something else. I'm not really sure. Let me go. Do I have any more? I know we got Connecticut as a pipeline. We're not going to bother with any of those guys. So what I probably need to do, 
is I want to stick with my pipelines. I want to keep it at least somewhat realistic when it comes to end season recruiting. So like, let's just go to these middle. Let me just look here. Let me go to this middle linebacker. He's another four star kid, Parker Stevenson, four, five, two. He, yes, let's just go and put one on him again. He could be a future middle outside defensive end. You just never know. I need to check on, uh, what was it? Free safety and wide receiver. We're going after one receiver and halfback. We're got the one halfback. Let me just go back really quick and see. Make sure I didn't miss anybody at halfback. Let me so New Jersey, Pennsylvania four star. Let me go ahead and put one on him. I like his speed. And then I need I just need to look at free safety. So let's go look at a couple. And then on that last scholarship, we'll put it on somebody. So let's go to free safety. I'm going to go all the way to all. This is where we can kind of go outside of the pipelines. I just said that I didn't want to do that, but I'm just kind of looking here. Maybe we can find somebody kind of local. Here's an Oklahoma, Hawaii, Mississippi, Kentucky, Florida, Ohio, Indiana, Florida, New Hampshire. 5'10", 189. I need somebody who's just really fast here. And none of these guys really looked apart. 4'4", 6", 4'4", One of those Ohio kids may be worth taking a chance on. Mississippi, let me look here. Let's go after this Ohio kid. Let's take a chance on Zach Green. Okay, again, the speed and he's smart. Let's go do that. The other thing was another, what, halfback? Is that right? Let me just make sure. No, I'm already going after two. What about another wide receiver? So let me go back to our pipelines. Just make sure I didn't miss anybody. Forgive me, this looks a little bit scattered, but there's a method to my madness. Let me go over to Maryland. Let me just look here. Three-star kid. If he could catch, it would probably be worth it. Uh, we could try that. I like his size and his speed's pretty good. Let me go ahead and just take one a chance on him. Actually, he's a three-star. I'm not going to bother. Let's just not do that yet. Let me go to New Jersey. Nobody there. What about Pennsylvania? He was the lone one. So, okay, I'll just go back to this kid. The kid out of Maryland. We'll just put one on him. Then we got one scholarship left. Let me just look here real quick. We're going after one free safety, one strong safety, two outside linebackers. A tackle. Uh, at this point, we can probably go after... Oh, and I don't know if it really matters at this point, but we can at least try maybe another uh, wide receiver, possibly, or maybe just go after something else. We may do like another offensive lineman, maybe a, a center. Is there a good center that's kind of local? We can try that. So let's go over here. Let's go to all states. Let's go to center. And let's just see here. Texas, Florida, Missouri, Louisiana, Minnesota. Uh, what about a tackle? A bunch of Southern players, Southern to Southwest and whatnot. We've already gone after the top tight end. I'm going to take a chance on that guy. We're already going after a couple of receivers. Just make sure, yeah, we're fullback. And again, we're kind of good at quarterback. I think I may go after another safety. So let's try that. So we got a strong safeties. So we got a kid out of Tennessee, Eagleton Village. That's pretty cool. Ohio, Virginia. Virginia was an actual pipeline at one point. So let's go look at Josh Hawley. I like that. He's smart. He's tall. He's got some speed, really good speed for a strong safety. And that's kind of close. Actually, Virginia was a pipeline for us at one point. So let's go ahead and put one on him. All right. So those are the 12 scholarships. So let's go over to play week. We're going to sim the week. And then we're going to look at, go after just maybe three or four guys at the most. And then we'll do the rest of our recruiting in the off season. So let's go over to recruiting and let's go after the guys we think we can get. So first thing I like to do is go for those positive pitches. You're just guaranteed, not so much guaranteed, but you're almost guaranteed a commitment. But I'm looking for a positive pitch out of the gate. So here's outside linebacker Tremaine Kilpatrick. Yes. Yes. I want this kid badly. And I think we got a really good chance of getting him. Let's go and put 25 on him for now. Let's go to wide receiver here. Strong safety, another outside linebacker, wide receiver, and that is it. So there's only one positive pitch so far, but it's one of the guys I really wanted. And so we lucked out there. Let's go after about three at the most other guys. So here are the two in-state players. I think we need to go after both of them. I think it's just obvious. I want to keep my best players in-state. I hate to see these guys go somewhere else like NC State or Purdue or whatnot. So I'm going to go 25. On the guard, can't have too much depth at offensive line. This is our future star halfback, possibly, and he's got eight minus hands. That's actually good enough. That's probably like a 65 catch rating for him, but we'll do 25 there. 
The last but not least player is, let me see, outside linebacker, guard, halfback. I'm going to go after a safety, unless it's tight end. Oh, my gosh. Look at this tight end. Sean Ward, A-plus hands. And we got a decent chance at him, too. And it's a pipeline. Oh, my gosh. Uh, do I go after that or a free or a safety? Like, here's this Ohio kid. We're at the bottom of that list. One of these strong safeties would have been nice to get. 4 3 9 like, this kid right here just really looks to part Josh Hawley out of Virginia. That's more of a need than the other position, than tight end. Just in my opinion. And then the other free safety, again, was from Ohio. And looks like, I mean, we probably would have a chance to get him if we dumped a ton of points on him. But I'd rather go after a pipeline kid. And this is not a pipeline. So what I may end up doing is let's just take advantage of our pipelines and just go after a fourth guy from one of our pipelines. So probably this tight end. I think it's probably a good idea. Because again, you look at our tight end position, we got a, have a bunch of seniors next year. Sanders may leave early. We got two seniors and a freshman. So this guy can redshirt. So I think I'm okay with that. So then I go after four senior, or four offensive players, a guard, halfback, tight end, and an outside linebacker. I think I'm okay with that. Again, I almost kind of want to go after this kid and say, let me know what you think. I, out of all the ones that I don't know of, for sure, like here's an outside linebacker. Again, we were going after one. We're good with Kilpatrick. But I'm, I, I feel like we got to go after the guard, the halfback, just because they're in-state. The tight end or probably the, the strong safety, Josh Harley. Other than that, I feel pretty good about the four guys we're going after. Anyway, put in the comment section if you think I need to do something different there. All right, that is it. In our next video, we're going to take on the mighty Texas Tech Red Raiders. There's going to be a lot of passing. Both schools are going to just chuck it around the field all day, and hopefully we can definitely put on a show. But more importantly, hopefully we can get the win. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later.